what's up y'all welcome to another one of my videos where I just you know kind of rant and ramble about things that are significant to me and uh, of utmost uh, of utmost significance to me is black wealth uh, or the building of black wealth um, and I'm gonna basically defend my position on why I believe that building wealth is one of the most selfless acts that one could undertake over the course of their life. Uh, There's nothing easy about it, I'm sure. Uh, just a few disclaimers, I'm not making any kind of blanket statements. Um, I, uh, I'm not wealthy yet, but definitely in the process of building that wealth for myself and my family. Um, and, you know, if you disagree, that's totally okay, uh, but defend your position, you know, that, that's my, that's my, uh, perspective, uh, but first I'm going to start with, uh, a little bit of background. First off, I didn't grow up wealthy, like I stated before, um, I don't come from a wealthy family by any means. Um, and there, there's definitely nothing wrong with that, but I will say that as a child, I observed differences or what, it, what appeared to me to be differences in resources that families had. Uh, I was consciously aware of the wealth divide between myself and my white peers coming up in school. I was definitely consciously aware of of the finances of my parents as a child um, and those things definitely impacted me growing up and honestly they continue to impact me as an adult um, so that's something that I am actively dealing with uh, actively working through I'll say so that I can get to that other side where I've always wanted to be and that's abundance and that's in my mind state and that's where it starts so that's that's where I'm trying to that's where I'm striving to get to um, how will I know I'm there you know I'm pretty sure it will, will reflect in in my life in my in my bank account you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but so I was aware of all these things growing up as a child right and, you know, for those of us that are parents, it is important that you be careful, be aware of the fact that children are intelligent. They're, sen they're sentient beings. They, they are aware of certain things. So you can't just assume that, you know, my child doesn't know anything about X, Y, Z. And while... As a child, I didn't know much about money or anything like that. I was still aware of the lack of it. I was aware that uh, of other people who appeared to have more, right? So it doesn't it doesn't require that I know all about money for me to have certain awarenesses about money uh, or the lack thereof. Um, so. You know, there wasn't a lot of of examples and images of wealth in my family. Sorry. Um, so I wasn't exposed to that a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I started to have these negative thoughts and beliefs surrounding wealth. Um, I always considered myself to be a good person, right? Um, but I would see what I would think to be not so good people having more than me, right? Um, I did, I went through a phase where I was heavily uh, into church um, would go to church, you know, every Sunday, and, you know, religious, religion, uh, not even the Bible, but religion, um, would teach that, you know, money is evil, 
And I mean, the Bible doesn't even say that money is evil that I recall, but religion would teach you that money was evil and that, you know, it was basically like poverty pimping, um, just celebrating poverty and how you'll be blessed, you know, in, in, in the next life, um, instead of the life that you're currently living, you know, just suffer, suffer, suffer through this life, and then you'll be rewarded abundantly on the other side. It's like, how many of us really know what happens when we die, where we go, you know? So, all of those things, plus more, just started to really, really, really impact how I viewed wealth and wealthy people. Um, as I got older and started to become more conscious of things, I went through a phase of kind of rebellion um, with, with the, the conscious community in, in, in our community, there's a lot of talk of how, you know, capitalism is evil, building wealth is evil, um, you know, more poverty pimping, just on a different level than religion. And I fell into that, which further perpetuated the beliefs that I started to develop as a child, um, there was a point in time where I was just like, man, I hate wealthy people, people that I, I didn't even know these people, right? But I would just make assumptions, basically projecting my beliefs out onto wealth and wealthy people or what appeared to be wealth to me. Um, you know, fast forward a little bit and I start learning about money. I graduate from college you know, and then I, I start realizing, that, hey, you know, I don't want to take the traditional quote unquote route in life as far as career, uh, retirement, when I'm 60, 70 years old. And, you know, I, that, I just felt in my spirit that that wasn't for me. Started learning about money, <clears throat> like I said, and I started to question I guess I started to rebel against my former self, right? Uh, I started to question everything that I thought I believed to be right. Um, you know, I, I would think back of, you know, when I would, you know, watch TV and be like, well, why does this person have X, Y, Z, and I don't? You know, am I just unlucky? Um, am I just unworthy? gotta be if 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 you know this is how God made my life I can't change that right <clears throat> and so as as I got older started learning about money I started to question all those things so you know I was like I have choices right um what about those those rich people that I loathe so much they had choices right um, of course, there are many, many, many situations where people have certain advantages over black people. So white people have, you know, these advantages over black people, of course. And that's, you know, that's thing, that's something that permeated the conscious community that I spoke about in that phase that I went through. Um, so I was like, OK, but. Is that an excuse for my not at least choosing to try? And so it got to the point where I said that's no longer an excuse. That's no, I'm no longer going to use that as a crutch. If this is the life I want over here, then I know that I need to try to work for it. Um, I got deeper into, you know, spirituality and, and hermetic laws and stuff like that. And so it really started to impact the evolving spirit that I am, right? So I started to, to have a different, entirely different perspective on wealth that I had than what I had before. And I started to think all of these, you know, nonprofit organizations, all of these organizations and how did they come to be? You know, they were they were 
thoughts in the minds of people, right? And as far as funding is concerned, they are, they're largely funded by wealthy people. You know, and I started reading about wealthy people and, and they're giving away of millions and millions and millions of dollars. And regardless of whether it's a tax write-off or not, they still give it away, right? So, and it still benefits other people or the, the intended party or whatever. Someone benefits from the giving away of that. And so I started to say, well... giving away money is not a selfish thing right and this is not to say that only rich people only wealthy people give money away for sure there are people that are not wealthy that are not rich that give money away right but you got people that are giving away huge fractions deep you know cons cons uh um significant fractions of money or significant amounts of money um, for causes that they believe in. Um, and so, you know, you can't discount the importance of the people on the front line, but also the money that backs those people. Um, and so there was a point in time in my life where, you know, I, I totally would not acknowledge the people backing financially these causes. Um, it was all it was all about the people with boots on the ground, right? Not realizing that it takes resources for those people to be able to execute on their mission, their common goal. <clears throat> so both are both are equally important, you know. Um, so uh, that's another that's another big shift that I had. Uh, that you know, my former self, there was conflict. Um, but a lot of us in the black community, especially the conscious community, wholeheartedly believe that building wealth is a terrible thing. Um, it, it's just terrible. It's not something that we should strive to do. We should instead focus on higher paying jobs, raising, uh, raising minimum wage, better jobs equal opportunity in the job, in the workforce, and all those things are important, yes, but that is not the solution, and it's certainly not the only quote-unquote solution, right? What I offer is, is this thought. In my wealth building process, those other things become less important to me, personally to me. So, if I'm in a if I'm in a place which I will be, if I'm in a place where I can make my own money, I'm not punching anyone's clock. I'm living life on my own terms. Then I don't care who's racist. I don't care who the president is. I don't care. Uh, I don't care that you know this job says I can't have locks. I'd have to cut them off or perm my hair. I don't care, right? Um, because I live my own life. I'm in control of my own life. Um, and the whole piece of it that, you know, basically why I say building wealth is a, is a selfless act is because I'm working, I'm busting my butt in this life to generate money that will outlive me. Money that will benefit people after I'm long gone. I can't spend it all. And that's not the point. That's that's something that the conscious community doesn't understand. Building wealth, the point isn't to spend all of the money that I make. The point is to leave a legacy. Leave something behind for my family that they can benefit from right for generations and generations but so many of us leave nothing for our descendants and i don't think i think that's kind of selfish you know we we you know leaving debt leaving problems 
No, I want to be able to, I want my picture to be hanging on my great grandchild's wall and, you know, they, or my great, great, great grandchild's wall. And they're saying, we have this because of this person. Although you've never met her, we are, are reaping the benefits of the work that she put in and we'll forever pay homage. We'll ever, we'll forever be grateful for her. Uh, and for what she did for our family. Now it's our job to continue that legacy, right? Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's a selfless thing. I know that, you know, my money will outlast me. That's the point. Um, you know, and I think it's selfish to be like, well, you can't spend it all. I don't want to. <laughs> That's <laughs> Spending it all is why we are where we are partially i'm not you know of course that's not a blanket statement um but that's just a part a piece of the puzzle and that is a piece that you can directly control so you know i choose to focus on the things that i can control directly um so yeah you know wealth building wealth is a selfless act you know it allows you to throw the weight of your money at causes that you believe in you know, so think about that. Think about that. Building wealth, you're not building it for the purpose of spending it all. You're building it for someone else. How selfless is that? The work that I'm putting in right now is not for me. It's for someone else. And that's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, if you, whatever comments you have, I welcome them. Uh, if you disagree, like I said, defend your position. Um, but thanks for watching.